Hello, my name is Joe, and in this course, I'm going to take you through how to create photogrammetry models for films, TV, and games. If you find this helpful, please like and subscribe and hit that bell for more videos. And don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. Also, if you find this helpful, please check out my Patreon below for exclusive content relating to photogrammetry, games. So what we're going to do in this section that differentiates it from section three is generating um, our masks and processing our masks. Now, this basically takes our images and cuts out the priority parts of it to then help it make it into a full 360 degree scan. Um, You'll notice that we took, as I say, these uh, two photos, or I, I mentioned about taking these two photos, which is the one with our little sellotape stand and without anything on it. And then when I moved a camera position, um, I took another one. So every time you move camera position or tripod position, you want to take another mask um, shot. So these, as I say, I take these first because what they do is they help break up where each batch of images it is so you can see you could get yourself in a mess if you took them all again because you wouldn't know what mask applies with what etc so what we want to do for the first mask is click on it and rename it so i name it mask one scroll back to the top and we want to select our first boot all the way down to the boot just before our second mask and we'll drag that into our project into chunk so as you can see here i'll just make these a little bit smaller we're getting our boots put in so what we want to do in the, here, in this uh, photos panel, I'll just enlarge it a little bit, is we want to select our boots. So if we select all our boots, hold a uh, shift and click on the bottom one, they'll all go uh, gray square. So if I click off it, you can see. And um, what we want to do is right click, masks, import masks. Now you want to set your masks as follows. So initially I believe it's from alpha. We want it from background. Um, operation replacement. Um, file name will come to that in a minute and tolerance now tolerance is how much of the picture will it cut out how aggressive will it be 50 I found work for uh, pretty much everything for me but obviously if your items more um, got more thin parts on it you know imagine say trying to photograph a cactus or something like that with the little needles um, you might need to drop the tolerance a bit and we want selected cameras se um, selected because we only want to affect these cameras now what we want to do is in file name is type in um, we want to get rid of everything that's here because uh, initially you'll get loads of uh, jargon here. So we want to then type mask one dot JPEG. Now, obviously, depending on what uh, format your camera comes out, this might need to be PNG or a raw format or a TIFF or something like that. So bear that in mind. But we're just using JPEGs for the minute. And then we'll press OK. And what this will do is this will take us to our folder. So if we just navigate back to our boots and just grab the boot location or find it on your hard drive and we want to navigate there so what will happen is there'll be nothing here but if we press select folder if it's found the correct mask what it'll do is it'll say processing in progress if it doesn't find the correct mask you'll say no mask is found so what happens with this is this can take a while depending on the complexity of your images um the same principle as before don't necessarily take um any notice of how long is left because it can take two minutes or it can take two hours, you know, whatever. So what I'll do is I'll pause here and then I'll come back and join you when it's processed. So after our first batch has uh, processed, if we click on this uh, square with a circle in the middle, what we'll do here is we'll see our images have been masked out. So if we switch back before, you can see that now it's not contained any background. Anything that's white is what is in um, is going to be processed and anything that's uh, in the background, they're black, won't be. So here's a little trick now. Um, See, yeah, it's done all of them. Here's a little trick now that has, uh, really helps. We want to now move to our next uh, mask. So what we'll do is we'll select all of the boots after the uh, second mask, right down to the bottom, drag those into chunk, and then we'll rename this mask, mask two. Obviously, depending on how many masks you've got, you'll repeat this process. Now, often what happens here is that um, if we were in this view and we try to apply our second mask, we don't really know where we are. You know, it's one of those, unless you've named these individually, etc. we don't know where they are. But if we click on a mask, what happens here is that our ones that have been processed that we just did, so our first batch have masks, and the ones that haven't have no masks. So if we select our no masks all the way down to the end one and right click masks, import masks um, exactly the same settings it generally this keeps the settings for projects so you don't have to change that once you've done it so we'll change this to two and okay same folder again select folder and it processes our next batch and we've now finished our next batch of um, masks here 
So we can see everything's masked out as we want. As you could see, I mentioned earlier on about the um, turntable, if that was um, not black around the edge, this would too would get masked out. But to be honest, that doesn't prove any uh, issues which you'll see. Um, so to say, what this is going to allow us to do is basically simulate, this is how I understand it, simulate this boot floating in midair so that it can then piece together um, all these different angles to make the whole 360 degree uh, boot. So that's the top, bottom, left, right, etc. So what we'll do is we'll move into the next section and we'll start aligning the photos.